So our handover project started um, approximately two years ago. I was a junior doctor um, working at Brighton and Sussex University Hospitals Trust. And so I was an F2 at the time and working weekends on call as many junior doctors do and really frustrated um, by the sheer volume of uh, patients being handed over from the uh, day team on a Friday. And really what you know, was quite frustrating was the method that was being used to hand over patients, just various types of formats of Microsoft Word documents, no standardization, and it made our life really tough on the weekend. You're already short staffed. So that just added a big challenge. And I found from speaking to my colleagues, we were all experiencing similar frustrations with the system. We did a, a kind of baseline measurement uh, whereby we sent out a survey to doctors and nurses involved in out of hours handover. The question was, um, had, had you been involved in instances where handovers hadn't taken place when on call? And nearly 70% of people had. Um, which obviously has huge implications for patient safety. The majority of people recognise that it was a problem and the fact that on occasions when you're on call sometimes handovers don't occur. I think everybody, well most people realise that this was not very good. One of the issues we identified to begin with was that the to hand over patients from the day team on call to the weekend team, there were a total of 12 different proformers in use, all of different structure, content, layout. Uh, so you can imagine being the weekend team on call, having to sift through that information to extract what you need to know about that patient was, was you know, really time consuming and inefficient and compromising patient safety in a way. So we knew immediate change was needed and we set out to design a standardised proforma um, in line with the Royal College of Physician guidelines. Engaged the junior doctors by um, kind of going to their induction and telling them about handover. We put up notices in the on-call offices. The senior nurses had supervision from the lead senior nurse. Um, we went to the mental health at night meetings and the trust medical education meetings to engage kind of more senior people in the trust. For our handover project, I mean, at the beginning it was more of a priority, but the support wasn't there right at the beginning. So we had to find out how can we access the key stakeholders and engage them in the organisation and. Before that project really got started, I had the opportunity to present an idea at an innovation forum that had just been launched at the Trust, which gave junior doctors an opportunity to pitch to um, hospital health professionals. You know, handover was a big area and it wasn't an easy area to fix. Um, and that gave me sort of a way in to uh, talk to people and talk to some of the more senior healthcare professionals. So if I was a junior doctor without that type of support, I think showing, showing the senior people in the organisation data would certainly highlight the issues and help to engage them in the problem. I also think engaging people from the very, very start of your project so they feel they've been included um, from the very beginning is also really helpful. Are there any peers around, any colleagues who might be sharing the same uh, feelings and, and may want to get involved in the quality improvement project as well. And what I'd say is just keep knocking on the doors. There's always somebody within the trust um, who will support you. And it's just about finding who that person is. And you may need to go away and assess the situation, do some baseline measurements, get some data together. So when you do meet that person, you have a credible picture. Initially we did some process mapping um, to map the out of hours processes occurring at each of the three sites within the trust on weekdays and the weekends and what we found was it was hugely different across all of them. So together we designed a handover protocol and guidelines to try and simplify the process at each of the three different sites. Um, we shared this with a small group of junior doctors and nurses for initial feedback which we used to improve the documents. 
and we then launched these across our trust and we did this at the beginning of a junior doctor rotation. We put posters up in on call offices, we sent emails and, and really kind of encouraged people to adopt the handover guidelines and the handover protocol. Went on to, to measure uh, whether or not these handover guidelines had worked and the way in which we did this was we we looked at so the first question was whether or not handovers were taking place or not. So we would contact junior doctors and nurses who'd been on call to ask them if they'd handed over and if not, why not. And we also did a staff satisfaction survey um, to find out if people were satisfied with the new handover process. And we repeated those measurements over the course of 18 months. We knew this was more of an interim improvement um, after testing it out with um, some of the senior physicians and junior doctors, we launched it for the general medical weekend on call and measured that over a um, one, six month and 12 month process. And straight away we saw significant improvement in documentation, content um, and um, in terms of all the other criteria required by effective handover. We knew this was just an interim improvement and we knew there were inherent limitations with paper performers in general. So the biggest part of the project actually centred on um, developing a bespoke piece of integrated electronic handover software. Um, we initially got together again as the project group and we rigorously analysed all the options about how can we really improve this process and how can we go beyond also just improving general medical weekend handover to improving day-to-day -day handover and handover across all specialties? And it was clear that an electronic handover solution could improve the process significantly. And at that point, we started sourcing our options. The electronic patient record was due to be coming in and implementing the trust in a year or so and speaking to you know, them, seeing whether we could develop an integrated solution to that. And then we, we finally agreed upon the, um, the idea to develop a bespoke um, integrated software tool into the existing patient administration system after assessing and analysing all those options. To summarise our measurement of improvement, um, so following the launch of the standardised handover pro forma, we um, reassessed junior doctors' perception and feelings towards handover using a survey which showed that they felt the new pro forma had improved um, patient safety and had improved the handover process and had allowed them to work more efficiently. In terms of more objective parameters, we audited the handover pro forma um, in line with the Royal College of Physician guidelines and compared the documented content to that that was being done previously. And there was a significant improvement and a significant sustained improvement over both one, six and 12 months. We asked staff to rate the handover process, which went up from 5 to 7.3 in the end. Within the survey, we also asked if staff had been involved in instances on call whereby handovers hadn't occurred, and that went from around 70% to around about 20%, so that also showed a reduction. We also measured whether or not handovers were occurring. Um, at specific times across the time period of our project and we found that the percentage of handovers occurring improved as time went on. So uh, Jen, uh, five tips to uh, carrying out a quality improvement project. What do you think? So I think my first one would be about engagement and I think engaging staff from all disciplines, anyone who's going to be affected by your project from the very beginning I think is really important because I think if you get buy-in at the beginning you're more likely to succeed in whatever it is you're implementing. Yeah. That's probably my number one. Yeah. How about you? Um, so a second tip I'd say uh, use a framework um, such as the PDSA model for improvement and there are a number of other fr frameworks but that's one I found particularly beneficial and that just helps to really teach you how to go through a quality improvement project step by step so you can really produce some meaningful results rather than just a snapshot picture in time um, which doctors are usually more common, mm. commonly used to doing. So I think by using a framework to guide your project, I think that, that's a 
good way to get started as well. Okay. I think another one is getting feedback from those involved in your project. And again, I think this probably feeds into my first point about engagement, but I think you know, the, the people who are going to be affected by the project, they are the best people to advise on what improvements can be made. And you know, they're the people working on the ground, and if you ask them, they're going to give you your answers. So I think that's another tip from me. Yeah, again, a good one. And feeding into that, um, so you talked about engagement and specifically I would say engaging with um, and getting senior support, um, whether that's support of your safety and quality team or a, um, a consultant or registrar particularly interested in patient safety and quality improvement in your trust. I think getting them on board and helping guide you through the process can really help uh, increase your impact. Okay. And I think finally, I would have a, a tip about kind of tackling resistance to change. I think in any project you do, there's always going to be some resistance and I think you, you shouldn't be afraid of that and I think you should embrace it and you know, go full on in trying to challenge it and overcome it. Definitely.